Hey guys, I am Perry Nemiroff, and welcome back to Collider Best of the Week, the place to go if you don't have enough time to watch all the videos on the Collider Videos YouTube channel or to read all the articles that go up on Collider.com. You want to check out some of the best of the best right in one spot. First up on today's lineup is Movie Talk, and this time we're going to highlight the story that Johnny Depp has a co-starring role in Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them 2. So... Obviously, he's made some stinkers recently, but also we can't deny the fact that this guy has an incredible body of work. So I'm kind of caught in the middle on this one. So let's check out what the Movie Talk panel thought. I got to say, I'm no longer in that place where I'm giving Johnny Depp the benefit of the doubt anymore. Now he's in a place with me where it's like, OK, I'll see what he does. And hopefully he can recapture some of that magic that he used to have uh, in something like this. I'll be honest, I'm approaching it a little bit more skeptically now than I would have before. I'm not sure I like it. Now, the other part about this is a lot of speculation going on out there right now that Depp will actually be playing Dumbledore, a young Dumbledore, or as I'm now referring to him as Dumble Depp. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that he will, Johnny Depp will be a younger Dumbledore and that there's even some whispers that he's actually going to be a cameo in this first film as Dumble Depp. I, I don't know if that's true. There's nothing official backing that up, but it is interesting. Uh, something interesting to speculate. I would be fine with it if that's who he's playing. If he nails the character, then great. I don't know, Mark, you heard about this. What do you think about that's it? That's the big question is if he nails the character because the reason why we got sick of Johnny Depp, it wasn't that he was taking these roles that we didn't want him to take. I think it was more so that we just felt like he was over character -y because he took a cue from what he did so well as Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean and then it started to get a little bit too out there, whether it's with Willy Wonka or Dark Shadows or something on that order, but he's done movies. He's done enough to where like when he was in Public Enemies, I thought he was great. Black Mass, I thought he was great even if his makeup didn't hold up its end of the bargain <laughs> but having him in a fantastic beast sequel and announcing it right now gets me more excited for it I, maybe it's just me but i think johnny depp is going to fit into this world very well it's not where he is to come in and be this crazy outlandish character and overpower the rest of the movie i think he's going to come in with the attitude that he's blending into what they've already set up in this first movie and in the harry potter universe this makes a lot of sense to me and i like it over on heroes we are talking the flash because similar to deadpool 2 the flash movie just just lost its director, Rick Famuyiwa. So let's check in with the Heroes panel who spoke a little bit about that specific movie and also about losing a director in general. Batman v Superman, whatever you think of it, I've come to quite like the extended, the ultimate edition. Mm -hmm. And even Suicide Squad did very, very well despite the critical drubbing those movies took. They're right. both very financially successful. Very financially successful. And there's a huge, there's a huge pressure to copy that success and the thing about the flash is they're killing it on tv mm -hmm. and if you're a director and you want to come in and go well look the flash is on tv every week what are we going to do to put this on the big screen to get people to come into the theaters you know we're seeing a lot of people like tim miller off deadpool too right mm -hmm. which is due to creative differences i feel i really feel like with tim miller though is him feeling a lot of pressure from having made such a successful flick and having to be like, I just don't know if I could do it again. We don't know what the full story is, whether it's like, you know, he got into a big fight mm -hmm. with Ryan Reynolds and Ryan Reynolds is the star and the producer. So ultimately he is the one who controls all the, the power, the creative yeah, right. power. So sure. if he doesn't want to do that and Tim does, Tim goes. It's not like they're, they're going to replace Ryan Reynolds. So, I mean, that's the problem that we see. And I think maybe that happened with Rick uh, Fumiyawa's maybe he didn't want to like have all of the Justice League in there. Maybe he was like, look, I'm making a Flash movie and mm -hmm. I've got this and I've got that. Because he was writing it too, don't forget. He was writing the screenplay um, or rewriting the screenplay. So Maybe he I, didn't want to do an origin story too because we've just seen the Flash origin story, what, three years ago? Mm -hmm. um, on pseudo on Arrow, pseudo on the Flash episode right. one. But also, uh, you, you asked about the release date. I don't think this is going to have anything I don't think it's going to affect the release date at all because Wonder Woman did the same thing. We lost our first director, Patty Jenkins, came out and the movie's still coming out on the same day. It never got pushed back. You're absolutely right. That's a good call. Here's an interesting story that the Jedi Council panel discussed. There's a brand new version of The Force Awakens out on Blu-ray now, and on it is a brand new commentary from director J.J. Abrams. Now, on that commentary, he revealed that before the events of The Force Awakens, Kylo Ren had never met Rey, but he had heard of her. So let's check out the panel's thoughts on that it's a game changer for the theories altogether by him coming out and saying two distinctly different things. Number one, they have not met. Okay, well that wipes a lot of the theories off the board. It also raises a few questions, but then the second statement, he knows of her. 
which is now what raises all the questions. One statement wipes the board, the other raises a whole bunch of new questions at the same time. And that's something J.J. Abrams is really good at. He keeps the audience guessing on what's going on. I think now there's going to be a lot more explanations now as far as why she is as powerful as she is because it's this lore that they're starting to create. It's the fact that he has heard of her. Why has he heard of her? Because she's freaking powerful. There's something about her. She was hidden. She was a prodigy. There was something about her that was more than just meets the eye. That's why I wasn't so quick to judge that she was able to use the saber right away, tap into the mind powers. There was a reason for it. I think that there's there's been a building to it. And I think that this explains that. I just like the fact that everybody that is in this galaxy so far, far away is still like trying to narrow down who exactly Ray is, if it's this person that they might speculate she is based on other things that we've learned in canon, like what you're talking about with Jakku, how there was an Imperial presence on that planet. So I wonder if that factored into how she came to be in the first place. It's really nice, and the cool thing to take away from this is that we've seen J.J. Abrams in interviews or when he's live on stage somewhere say some things and either retract them or have them not be the truth. This is released on the Blu-ray. This is him doing an audio commentary where if he said something that he didn't like or he wanted to take something out, he had all the power to do that. This was not done in one take. So the the fact that this is staying in on the commentary means that they want us to be talking about this little nugget and digesting it, so it definitely has a place in the Star Wars universe. This week for Collider Nightmares, we're going to focus on Ryan Murphy's quotes because he revealed that there's plans for an American Horror Story crossover season between season one, which was Murder House, and season three, which was Coven. So let's check out our thoughts on that and also a little bit about the current season, Roanoke. My favorite season, though, is still Murder House. Mm -hmm. So the, the fact that we could go back to characters that were in Murder House makes me very, very happy. And even though I think Coven had a number of glaring weak spots, I think that was a solid season two with some of the best characters. I think those two seasons had the strongest characters. So if we're talking about yeah. mixing the two of those up, those are the two seasons I would pick. And in terms of just the succession of American Horror Story seasons, it, we, we experienced that problem with season six where it's like, what could the theme be now? Where are they going to go from here? An MVP season, in a sense, could be the way to spice it up and make it a little different. I don't want to wait till season seven. I hope that they're just like, screw it. We're doing this crossover. That season, that's going to be season seven. But it sounds like they're like going to do something else, then do it as season eight. I'm cool as long as they bring the Coven back. All right, Mark Riley. Yeah, well, uh, I, I can't speak on Coven. I haven't seen it. I've only seen Murder House, and now I'm totally caught up and loving this season of American Horror Story. However, it is a balancing act that they are doing right now. It's working for me. I can tell why it's maybe not, well, maybe not tell why, but I can understand why it might not be working for a lot of people. Because as I watched last week's episode, I tweeted out, this is legit bat, you know what. Like, mm. this is bonkers to the wall. I'm digging it. So when I think about putting these two together, like I said, I haven't seen Coven, so that sounds like a fine line that they're going to walk as well in order to make something work. So I don't know. Am I interested? I'm going to have to go back and watch all of these seasons now because of my love for Rono. Oh, see, look at that. You I used my mind and hmm, knocked everything you over. You can definitely skip Freak Show. <laughs> skip Freak Show? Okay. <laughs> I yeah. love Kathy last. Bates in The Coven. She is I, incredible. I, I love Kathy Bates in everything and especially in, in Rono. First up for this week's interview portion of the show, we're going to highlight Steve's chat with Andrew Garfield for Hacksaw Ridge. Now, that movie is based on a true story, so here Andrew talks a little bit about balancing fact and fiction for this movie. Talk a little bit about balancing fact versus fiction when making a movie. Mm -hmm. You're obviously playing a real person. This all really happened, mm -hmm. but you're also making a movie. Mm -hmm. So, sort of, can you talk about towing that line? Sure. Again, it's 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 a more that that's more of a male concern for me. You know, the the character of Desmond is stranger than fiction. So I I didn't I didn't have to worry about that. The stuff that he did, there was stuff that he did on the battlefield. Um, that we couldn't put in the film because it would have been absurd. After he steps on the grenade and um, his leg gets blown off, which happened, he, he's carried on the stretcher, but in reality what happened is he saw another wounded guy, rolled off the stretcher, crawled over to the wounded guy, started treating his wounds, and then said, give this guy the stretcher, I'll crawl back, he's in worse shape than me. And he starts crawling, he grabs a gun, uses it as a splint on his arm, gets shot up on the way back, like 300 yards. It's, it's crazy what he did, it's insane. So, you know, you know I'm for me, I was able to just, just go to the facts of, of who Desmond was. That, that's actually crazy. It's insane, literally insane. 
Now let's move on over to Steve's interview with the Sorcerer Supreme himself. It's Benedict Cumberbatch. Steve asked him about deleted scenes from Doctor Strange, and let's check out what he told him. I'm always cu uh, curious about deleted scenes. Is there a few that you're sad that didn't make the finished film? Well, uh, DVD actually wise, I think there should be, there's going to be a lot more of the magical mystery to us just talking about how really comfortable the gravity rig is and uh, how much I admire uh, anyone who's worked on one before. Um, it, it's um, Sandra Bullock being the primary one in gravity, obviously, but it's the most extraordinary sequence, I think, in many ways in the film, visually especially. And yeah, we did a lot, a lot, a lot of setups, a lot of different jobs, a lot of different kind of uh, imaging. And uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's more to be shown, I'm sure. Uh, I am, like I'm sure you, uh, so looking forward to the next Avengers movies. Yeah. What are you most looking forward to about being part of the Avengers? I mean, all of it. And I met you know a few of them on the red carpet last night, and I just can't wait to see who I'm paired up with and how it works out. But uh, we'll have to wait and see to talk in more detail about that. This is your parents. And I really like your t-shirt, by the way. Now you're getting I want to know where. <laughs> yeah, you know, when I got it a long time ago, I just, I'm just <laughs> wondering where I can get one. This week for TV Talk, we're gonna highlight their pilot review, and it was for a new show from Amazon called Good Girls Revolt. If you were wondering whether or not that one is worth your time, let's check out what the panel thought. So when you watch this show, you, you have to compare it. You, you, you don't have to. You have to. You have but to, you you have to compare it. it to Mad Men. Like, you just have to, granted, different, different businesses. These are journalists. But very similar. Those, those were ad execs. And, you know, but... Again, I talk about Matthew Weiner and how good of a writer he is. He has the drama, the playfulness. He has the comedy. It just it works so well together. This show just felt flat to me. I just didn't. It's not that anybody was doing a bad job. I love Anna Camp. Yeah. She's a beautiful woman. She's a great actress. Great She's actress. talented. I loved her in True Blood. I was excited to Hell see yeah. her. I understand that back then, life for women in the workplace was absolutely terrible. And it, they didn't have, they couldn't do, they couldn't put their names on stories as reporters. They weren't getting offered roles like Peggy and in Mad Men and mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. And I, under, I understand that. I understand that that's the storyline of this. But to make all of the men like misogynistic monsters really kind of takes away from like, there had to been one good guy in the office. They just didn't think outside of the box in any way. They hit every cliche. Mm -hmm. They every hit everything cliche. that you have seen in every 60s movie. What, Cause the thing is, is this is based on a true story. Yeah. This is about what happened at Newsweek in 1970 when women f stood up for equal pay and equal opportunity and said, we want bylines. We want to be able to not just research, but report because they were already reporting. Mm -hmm. It's a really fascinating subject. And the Super production design is great. This show feels sophomoric, de definitively sophomoric. Now it's time to move on over to the Collider.com portion of the show when we get to highlight some of the written features done by the team over there. First up on today's lineup, if you're watching Westworld, you've probably come across a fair amount of man in black theories. And if you're not watching, this article is not for you because it contains Westworld spoilers. If you do want to read though, this is a great piece from Adam Chitwood about what was kind of revealed in the most recent episode. Next, we're sticking with TV for the 15 TV series most likely to get reboots and revivals. This one was written by Craig Byrne, who suggests that shows like Quantum Leap, Freaks and Geeks and Glee will probably return at some point in the near future. Now we've got a great Collider.com staff list. It's the 25 best sci-fi films of the 90s. If you like things like Stargate, Terminator 2, and Starship Troopers, this one is a must-read for you. We've also got a brand new addition to the Start Here series from Chris Cabin, and the subject of this new installment is John Carpenter. So if you've never seen a John Carpenter movie or just need to brush up, Chris offers a great rundown of movies you should check out. We're gonna wrap up this section of the show with something you've probably been hearing a lot about recently thanks to the release of Doctor Strange. It's a ranking of the MCU movies from worst to best. This one is Matt Goldberg's personal opinion, so go check out his thoughts on Collider.com and then share your own rankings in the comments section below. Now it's Schmodown time and we've got two matches to highlight. First up is the team match. It is Team Patriots versus Team Heroes. Let's check out a preview. America needs heroes, and Team Heroes, yes. mm -hmm. uh, they are not the, the heroes that America needs, okay? We're going to crush these guys. I have that feeling, don't you? Bill Belichick, I mean, Tom Brady, Grankowski, who cares? The Patriots, I don't want to hear about that Seahawks game. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it is a different Patriots. Oh, it's yeah. a different. Oh, it's mean, not the Mel Gibson It's movie a either. lesser yeah. Patriots. Yeah. Like a Patriots, like, dude, we're the heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, Big John Schnepp, Robert Meyer Burnett, Team Heroes! 
welcoming to a very favorable, what appears to be a home crowd here, Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the It Snyder, Jeff Snyder, and Little Evil J.T.E. The Patriots! Oh, they're mocking oh. the Patriots! In what setting is the majority of the 2010 film Devil? An elevator? One point for Jeff Snyder. Who directed the ensemble cast thriller Contagion? That would be Steven Soderbergh. That would be correct. They're on the board. All right. Now for the singles match, we have Jason Inman facing off against Jeff Snyder. Let's check it out. I feel confident. My last match, I came here. The bright lights got to me. It was my last shot to get into the tournament. So I got a little spooked. I missed some things that I obviously knew, but I couldn't remember under the bright lights. Now the pressure's off. It's very easy. I've never even met this man before, so I'm not that afraid of him. Who? Jason Inman? He's, I understand he's the host of DC All Access, something like that. Fortunately, this is not a DC movie trivia contest. It's all movies, uh, all encompassing, in which case I think I'm going to just kill him. Jason Justice Inman! Whoa! Whoa. Wow! I like that color scheme. Turn down the volume on that wardrobe, Christian Harlock. The In Snyder! Jeff Snyder! Oh, the tank top Look Patriots! Look at the gun show! Oh, my. Covert government assassin Al Simmons is double-crossed and killed in what film? Uh, Spawn. Correct. The Oscar winning, I believe. Yes. Spawn. What character does Wilson Fisk hire to kill Daredevil in 2003's Daredevil? Bullseye. Give him a point, Christian. He's go. on the All board. Right. Now it's time for Meme of the Week, the portion of the show where we get to highlight a meme or a piece of artwork that one of you fine viewers have sent in. This week, it's all about Halloween memes, and we're going to highlight two of them. This one, you could probably figure out who chose this, is from Lauren, who goes by the name Zeke1487 on Twitter. She was Katy Perry for Halloween, which basically combines my bangs with my love for cats, and I love this image. It's incredible. The second one is from... Sorry if I'm butchering your name now. Sign Luna, who goes by the name Brandon Granzow on Twitter. And this one highlights Schnepp's costume from Movie Talk this week. And it is super creepy. But when you change the colors, it's even creepier. And I love this image. And now it will haunt my dreams forever. Thank you so much for sending these two in. They are a lot of fun. We love dressing up for Halloween over here. So now, if you guys want your meme or artwork featured right here on Collider Best of the Week, it's super easy to do. Please just go pick a moment from one of our shows. Make a meme or piece of art about it, send it on over to mailbag at collider.com, or you could tweet it at us using the hashtag Collider Best of the Week. I'll sort through them all, and maybe your art will be on next week's show. Uh, uh, uh. I'm your host, Sinead DDD, <laughs> DJ DeFreeze, and I am a 10, always walking out here, coming in hot. So happy to be joined by rocket scientist Ashley today. I mean, <laughs> like, you. seriously, she, she, she looks intimidating. She looks so smart. Do I? Ch -ch -ch Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Ch -ch -ch Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Johnny Depp is well known for his outlandish roles like the Mad Hatter. Like, what else the fuck has he done? I don't know. Hey, guys. <laughs> welcome, guys. Happy Monday. We got a huge show, guys. We're going to be talking about tons of things. Superheroes, Westworld. I'm going to hate it, but we're going to keep going anyways. Yep, these glasses really do it. <laughs> oh, he got dumb. He just got dumb right there. <laughs> You look like the Chippendales after about 20 years of not getting a lot of work Boom. and falling into an alcohol problem. Ray. Ray Breslin. 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 Think Breslin. Breslin. But will it. Uh, <laughs> so keep your eye on. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's one of those days. We'll see how it goes from. from yeah, fucking shit. Um, his brother, Charlie. Mm -hmm. uh, Will. Nope, Charlie? Wow. <laughs> Will Byers played by Noah Schnapp. <laughs> that, was a, that was a brain fart We're from the, the other side. Down right now, now. Exactly. Hey, guys! We're <laughs> great, 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 great. So excited to be here, guys. It's me, Sasha Perot Raven. Hey, I can sell you. 
3D with no glasses. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, look at everything. Wife, that's no 3D. You know what I mean? Hey. I'd, I'd be happy to have a resume. So, uh, you know, what am I talking about? I think you would have made a great Cylon. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> put well, me that, in that I, one. I, yeah, you just put that image in my <laughs> head. And now, now. I, I... Let me show my butt cheeks. Yeah. Hello. Oh. All right, here we go. Is that too far, Dennis? Yes. Uh, Wendy and I got to wear it. You know, we uh, with a Y, a wit. We got to wear the cloak of... Uh, we got to wait. I can't even speak. Hey, what's up, blooper reel? What the fuck? <laughs> so we got an email yesterday from the studio saying, new Triple X Xander Cage story or trailer <laughs> dropping tomorrow. So now I know Ashley Mova has been keeping a close eye. She's been monitoring and searching the internet for Triple X trailers. Uh, how's, how's your search gone, Ashley? You know, there's a lot of Triple X videos, but I can't seem to come across <laughs> the right one. Oh, oh, uh, sorry, Mom. I'm sorry that you had to hear that in that terrible talk. But you guys, we've got a great show. We're going to be talking about British stuff, PBS stuff. Cubs win! Cubs win! Cubs win! <laughs> What if you were a hot dog, Lord? <laughs> what? How are you doing? Oh, 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 my God! It's, it's Michael Myers. I heard him come walking in. Oh, oh, oh. And Negan is here. Don't worry. Did everybody get the 40 time on Negan? Hey, guys. We're Collider News. I'm Ashley Mova. <laughs> hey, guys. We're Collider News. <laughs> Hey guys, for Collider News, I'm Ashley Mova. What the hell? Hey guys, for Collider News, I'm Ashley Mova. I can't do the guns. Like I can't even have that kind of fun. See, I got all the Josh details down. I got the nips. I got the sweat. I got the muscles. I got a little bit of stubble. And I got these. <laughs> Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Johnny Depp, yeah. explain. I mean, you just gotta get your hands like, like that. Yeah. And if it was yeah. one. Who is the better looking Halloween table today? This table over here, or that table over we there? Have a we got shirt. some. Look at, look at us We go. got duo Wonder Woman going on over there. <laughs> I, I think that if you're, a, if you're a woodland creature, this is the table for you. Yo, uh, hey, Arnie, what do you think about this, huh? <laughs> I have to be honest with you. I'm going to sell this because there's been no mention of me. Where am I? I'm nowhere. And talk about overseas. I make a soda commercial for Japan that makes millions and millions of dollars. Hey, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, that was one, amazing. We both had to clear our throats <clears throat> at the yeah, same see, time. It's like ET. These costumes are connecting us. <laughs> I don't think they're blowing their load early, John. They have many loads to blow with this film. <laughs> Love in Pennsylvania, always. <laughs> always. If you need to love Pennsylvania, come to me. If uh, not, I'll be hanging out with my lady. Uh, you can find me at thatsocianade.com or somewhere there on Instagram, Twitter, looking fabulous, taking pictures in, in shopping carts. Woo! Woo! Sorry. Christian, can I have you come over here for a second and just, just restrain him for a minute before yeah. I before I ask what I'm about to ask? You said, hey, once that screen set up a long time ago and got so far, far away, uh -huh. what, uh -huh. if, what if they pull that out too? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can find me online at uh, GriffinDE on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, on thir Nope, that's when we shoot on Saturdays. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Love all of you so, so much. Yes, 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 yes. Happy Halloween. <laughs> And with that, that's a wrap on Collider Best of the Week. You guys know what to do. Hit the comment section below. Share some of your favorite moments from this week's lineup of shows. I am Perry Nemiroff. You can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at PNemiroff. Please go bookmarkcollider.com. Subscribe to the Collider Videos YouTube channel. Watch and read everything. But just in case you don't have enough time, that's what Best of the Week is for. Have a great weekend, everyone. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.